Amen. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Who else has one? Let's read it together aloud. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Christianity is a fight. Christianity is a fight. It's for... It, it, <clears throat> the promises of God belong to those who surrender their all and agree to fight. Amen? Yeah. You surrender your all to Jesus. You give up claim to your own life. You acknowledge that Jesus is now Lord. You don't have the right to live for self any longer. To maintain that attitude toward God is a fight. Because we want to take our lives back. Live for self. Do what's right in our own eyes. The fight of faith isn't necessarily uh, reigning in the thoughts that say I'm going to die because the doctor said I got cancer. There's a fight there. As you would try to hold fast to a profession of faith and, and stand on a promise regarding some provision of God. There's a fight there, isn't there? Sure. But a big part of the fight is the daily dying to self to make sure that Jesus is Lord of our lives. Amen? Because we have this foul tendency to try to take back control and think that we have uh, some justification for living for ourselves. A Christian is surrendered and submitted to Jesus' lordship. Amen? And it's a fight of faith to maintain that relationship, at least from our standpoint. From God does, God does a fine job of, of remaining fully committed to us. It's a fight for us to be fully committed to him. Amen? It's uh, drawing his grace to do so. For this week, Psalm 100, verse 3. Um, Lord willing, we'll continue the study that we began this morning. We'll continue it on Wednesday. Uh, this is a verse that deals with God being our creator. Psalm 100, verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now, I know that whenever we talk about God being the shepherd and we being the sheep, I, you know, I, I get the, the tenderness to the language. But this sounds like possession to me. We belong to him. Amen? It's not we that made ourselves. God made us. We belong to him. Certainly that's the language of the scripture when, when we talk of redemption. We've been purchased with his blood. Amen? We belong to him. And again, in light of the... Uh, uh, the realities we were discussing this morning, like the reality of God, the ultimate reality, we should live like we believe we belong to God. God owns us. He has redeemed us. He purchased our lives. Those are sober thoughts. That sounds like a serious business. There are definitely uh, tender sides to the, uh, the, the relationship that we have with our God. But God's almighty. Jesus is Lord. And we live as Christians in submission and subjection to him. Amen? We're his. We belong to him. He made us. Not we ourselves. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. Psalm 100, verse 3. And then... <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, we go over to Isaiah. And we'll do 44, verse 6, where we started this morning. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So there's God who is in control. Amen? That's the way we live. That's what you say you believe. And if you believe it, you live accordingly. You live your life from that perspective. There's a real God. This life is a vapor. The things which are seen are temporal. The things which are unseen, those are the things that last. Those are the eternal things. We have our citizenship in heaven. That's the way we live as Christians. Amen? The Bible speaks of us as being pilgrims. We're, we're just passing through. A brief stay on this planet. This sin-cursed world. Our lives are, uh, we are, we are <clears throat> we're dying the moment we're born. Things are wearing out. And that's not dreary, that's just reality. That's, that's <clears throat> a clear and biblical perspective regarding our existence on earth. We're just passing through. Christians live with that perspective. They don't allow themselves to get entangled with the affairs of this life. They don't get all bent out of shape when things don't go their way. God's on his throne. Just this life is a vapor. It's here today, gone tomorrow. Life on earth. But when a soul is born again, they pass from death unto life. They become citizens of an eternal kingdom. They're going to live forever with God. Amen? We keep that in clear perspective. Clear perspective. Amen? Amen. So that's <clears throat> Isaiah. He's the only true God. Uh, yeah, we can rearrange the furniture. We'll have the guys come on up and we'll talk about the topic that we were on in our home fellowship group meeting on Friday. God and his ability to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Amen? I know just fellowshipping with the guys sounds like, a, uh, shortly before service, sounds like we had some good meetings. And uh, we're on topic. <clears throat> of course, we talked of uh, not just God's ability. That's rarely called into question. <clears throat> but he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we would ask or think. Uh, what do you think God can do? Of course, we talked of uh, situations sometimes being big and beyond. Uh, I know... <clears throat> I, I enjoy some of the little illustrations that I use. I do. I'm just telling you, okay? I like to think about the, the, uh, the, with God, it being possible for Moses to carry around a rock whenever they moved. You with me there? I mean, it just helps me to remember that, yeah, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And with God, all things are possible. Amen? So it doesn't have to be a big rock to get lots of water out of it. Does it? No, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Yeah, guys, come on up. <clears throat> of course, we also talked from James about asking, asking a miss. We'll talk about that in here in just a moment. Some of the guys said there was some good conversation in the meetings along those lines. Yeah, I, I see. I'm about center here. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. The universe has to be in balance here. I was telling somebody about that. We talk about the way we're wired. Um, we were doing a project there in Sterling. They got a lot of things going on now that they're, they're redoing. Totally redoing the sanctuary. I mentioned that, right? Other things. Um, didn't I mention that? I think I mentioned that, yes. Um, but at one of the work days there a couple weeks ago, um, there was a bunch of lumber uh, coming in off of a trailer and being stacked by a, a cutting station that we had just set on up. And some people actually started to stack these 10-foot 2x4s and they weren't parallel to the nearby exterior wall. I mean, how can you function like that? <laughs> 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 
Marianne and I were, were going on a walk, and it's, it's interesting, uh, another little example. Um, some of you, having been to Sterling, recall that behind the, the lectern that was up on the platform, there was a wall that had this, you know, stone, fake stone up on there. Well, as, uh, as is the case with some people, when they look at the clouds, they see faces and animals and, and things like that up in the clouds. Some people look at these stones and they see things. It came on out. You know, people, oh yeah, well that's, oh sure, everybody knows where the lion is and everybody knows where the angel is and like that's what they see. That's not the way I look at things. I look at, I look at the, the joints between the stones and I'm looking for parallel patterns and <laughs> perpendicular patterns, things of a geometric nature. That's, that's just the way I look at the world. I mean, I'm, if I walk into your house and I'm looking and the carpet has a pattern, I'm looking at, at, at geometric patterns that might be there in, the, in, in what's woven into it or, or maybe even in the traffic, the stains in the carpet in your house or whatever it might be. But no, I mean, Marianne, we were talking, talking along those lines, because she said, you know, she looks, and the stick that's sticking up out of the water as we're floating down the Red River Valley, you know, and, oh, yeah, that sort of looks like a dog, said. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, I'm looking at the angle at which the stick is coming up out of the water, and the reflection, of course, is a perfect match to the angle, and it's just the way I happen to be wired. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't recall how we got over there. Sterling two by four. <laughs> not back, you keep coming us, back. You tell us about how we're going to change the chairs here. Like oh, yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. Well, as these chairs were just set up, this chair is like, my chair is like in the center, which means there's two over there, one over there that's imbalanced. And, and I'm sure, you know, you'd probably sure. be leaning, you'd be falling out of your seats <laughs> if, if, if we left it that way. No, I mean, we've got to have it symmetrical. Balance. That's quenching the spirit. Oh, yeah. Yes. Asymmetry? No. no. That's, just, that's just not God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> the Lord is good. Amen. Uh, it is um, just uh, the, the, the beauty that there is to, um, to the creation. You know, we we're talking some... Uh, did I did I mention the uh, the the orientation of the of the of the flower petals in detail? You know, like I was talking with you. Not the detail that you're talking to me. You mentioned. I'll I'll go through this rather slowly, okay, and try to um try to get a picture, draw the picture if you'd like. Um, uh, that number that I was mentioning. 1.618034, you know, and on and on it goes. Okay, and, and you remember where that came from, right? Mm -hmm. As you carry out that Fibonacci sequence, you know, uh, as far as it, uh, out as it goes, you take one number and you divide it by the previous number and you get 1.618034. And on and on and on and on and on. The, the, the decimals go. Go there. Sarah's going to check it there. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you quite didn't do it. Um, but um, follow the picture now, okay? Say we take a, 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 um, a line that is 1.6 no, uh, feet long and another one. Uh, a line that's one foot long. Good there? Mm -hmm. So now if you put them together, you would have a line that's nominally 2.6 uh, feet long, right? Mm -hmm. Curl that thing around into a, a circle. Good there? So now we've got a circle whose circumference is the 1.6, 1 1.618034, 1 good? And one. Good there? The total distance around is that. Okay, now take a look at the, the segment that, um, that is subtended by the one point, excuse me, just the one. Good there? Mm -hmm. So we've got one, and then the rest of the way around is 1.6. Good there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you know when you're slicing a pie, just look at a pie. Yeah. Look at a pie, it's an apple pie, it's a pizza pie, whatever kind of pie you like, okay? That's a pie. And 
you've got this chunk that is pie-shaped, and then the curved part is one. Uh, there's a smaller curved part is one, and the rest of it is the, the rest, the, the stuff that, that you keep. You give the smaller part <laughs> to your friend, and you keep the other, okay? Well, that portion forms an angle at the middle, you know, because you come in the middle, mm -hmm. and that angle is about 137 degrees. Good there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in nature, that's, that sounds like math, doesn't it? Okay. So now we're going to take that into the realm of plants. I like plants. Good there? All righty. So you've got a, a stem. I'm looking at Denise back there. You've arranged flowers before, right? Okay, so you got a, a this is, these are real flowers though. These are real. These aren't those, those, those plastic ones you buy from who knows where they came from China. No, this one God made. Okay? So you got this, this stem and you put a, a, in a stem, okay, a flower, you put a petal on that, but it's going to have multiple petals, okay? So guess what? You come around from that petal, 137 degrees, and you put another petal. And you come from that pedal, another 137 degrees, and you put another pedal. And 137 degrees, and you put another pedal. And, so, and around, and, and guess what? That's the way they are in a lot of flowers. A lot of flowers, the, 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 the angle between subsequent petals, as they spiral around the stem, tightly, tightly closed together, it's the same, it's the same number. And... A lot of flowers have Fibonacci numbers of petals. Hmm. You know, like we did the, the zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21. There are plenty of flowers that have 13 petals. And then guess what? There are plenty of flowers that have 21 petals. Yeah. Now, there are not 14s or, or, or 17s, 13s and 21s. And, and the spacing, as these things spiral around, yeah, it's that same number. Where's that come from? How'd that, how, how'd that happen? Again, that's just, that's just God's little signature. And all that he does, all that he does, God, he signs the painting. He does. He does. Yep. That's the Lord. That's not just coincidence that it would be so. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> we talked of, of God uh, being able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we would ask or think. And yep, uh, even as we talked this morning, we should keep uh, God in clear perspective. Amen? Yeah. Because it puts everything else where it ought to be. Uh, relatively small before him. Nothing too great for him. Amen? Yeah. I mean, the children of Israel standing at the, 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 the bluff of the Red Sea before him. Armies of Pharaoh behind him. God's on, on the scene. Uh, Red Sea seems small. Pharaoh's army seems small. I have, no, I have no idea what he's going to do, but he's on the scene. No problem. No problem. Amen? Right? You can walk across, fly across. Uh, Scotty could beam you up and, and transport you across. Right? Right? Some of you know who Scotty. Some of you old people know who Scotty is. Yeah? Um, uh, no problem, right? Yep. Yeah. With God. When our, with our eyes on God. God, uh, the perspective. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. So, um, yeah, jump in, guys. But, uh, what stood out from the teachings to you all, or maybe some things that stood out from the meetings that you'd like to discuss? Sure, kick us off. On Wednesday... Though you weren't here, and I was just reminding everybody about the meeting and getting ready, and just said a little bit about it. <clears throat> and that was uh, one of the big points that, that got my attention 
or one of the main, I think, thrusts of the teaching was the practical application of God doing exceeding abundantly above mm -hmm. all that we can ask or think. And we said, you know, God is the one who can part the Red Sea and open the eyes of the blind mm -hmm. and raise the dead mm -hmm. and help you be patient with your kids mm -hmm. and, you know, all of those type of things. And sometimes in our minds, there could almost be two separate lists, the spectacular things like parting the Red Sea and raising the dead. And then there's just the mundane things of like, help me love my wife and lay down my life for my friends. Um, but that is where that principle most commonly finds application in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to part the Red Sea very often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, seriously, some, we'd, we'd all want to see the dead raised, but um, you don't see dead people every day or probably even every week or something like that. Uh, but you see your kids every day. Mm -hmm. Husbands, you see your wives every day. Wives, see your husbands every day. We all see each other every day. And uh, the promise of God to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think finds application in these very practical ways. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have to do with relationships. Certainly, that's not the only topic. But uh, that was... That was one of the good reminders from mm -hmm. the teaching mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't lose what the Lord is actually saying in those passages of Scripture. Mm -hmm. um, for me to love other people, that's supernatural. Mm -hmm. Naturally, I love myself, mm -hmm. and that's, that's it. So I need God to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think and help me to lay down my life for my friends, help me to be patient with mm -hmm. my children, help me to be diligent in my work or a bold witness on my job, things like that. So mm -hmm. it is good. Uh, of course, you gave the teaching around the time of camp there, another very practical application where we're looking to the Lord to give us strength to preach the gospel. We're looking for him to bring people into us. Um, that those are the ways that the Lord can do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. And of course, he does them in the other ways also, and we want to look for those, for yeah, dead people to be raised and the eyes of the blind to be opened mm -hmm. and uh, the ravens to bring food and all those, those ways. We certainly want to believe for that. We don't want to in any way undermine that, like uh, we don't see that stuff anymore. No, we believe for that. Mm -hmm. um, but very commonly, it's these other seemingly more mundane ways that we need the Lord to show up and do something because if he doesn't give us the grace, if he doesn't do the work in our hearts and through us, then it's not getting done. Mm -hmm. So we need him to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Uh, shouldn't be difficult for us to consider that the, the biggest thing that needs to take place uh, is for us to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, Next to that, the red changing the water into wine or crossing the Red Sea seems pretty small. But for me to look like Jesus, Amen. that's a miracle. Amen. That's a real miracle. So, you know, you talk of, um, of, of looking to the Lord uh, to love your wife. Be more patient with your kids. There, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask. Amen. We could have some idea, okay, man, this is the way I, 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 sh I could be. You know, maybe a really good husband would be this way toward his wife. And now, you know, you got some mental picture of what that would look like. Patient with the kids. God's able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Because, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, you might have some idea of, yeah, I, I would like to be a better husband. And, 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 and you have just some sort of nebulous concept of what, how that might get walked on out and, and, and what it might look like. And God is able to do exceeding abundantly above. I mean, they really make you look like, uh, like, a, like a, yeah, husband of the year, dad of the year, more like Jesus is really what we're talking about. And, uh, and he is able. He is able, well able. And he is desirous. And, uh, and so we ask him, yep. amen. amen, and trust him for that. Yep. Just on that point, <clears throat> um, miracles that involve human free will, I've certainly had occasion to think that. Yeah. Aren't those the greatest ones? Yeah. You know I mean, certainly regeneration and then the conforming of uh, the 
individual to the image of Jesus. If you've spent much time trying to serve the Lord yourself and trying to help other people serve the Lord, you will find out that, yeah, the human free will is the hardest load to move. You know what I mean? Raising a dead person, you can, I mean, it really does. It's like, it's spectacular, but the, getting a person to choose life mm-hmm. is a work of the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. And that's what we all need in our lives yeah. every day. I can, in, in part, that's why uh, the passage there in Philippians is, is an extra special one to me, that it is God yes. who is at work in us, mm-hmm. both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Mm-hmm. I know I got a will, and God gave it to me. And he doesn't override it, but he can influence our will so that we would embrace his will, so that our will would be conformed to his will. And he can do that. He does do that without violating or overriding our will. How does he do that? I've got, I've got, I, he has given me uh, the, the free will I can choose life or I can choose death. But he can influence my will so that I would embrace his will. That's glorious, isn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, it's not that God's not able or he's not willing. Because we all know that if we pray for personal holiness in our life, that's a prayer God's going to answer. He's definitely at work constantly in our lives, conforming us into the image of Christ. And the more we pray about that, the more that, and that's really when God gives us the desires of our hearts. Because God puts that desire, as Pastor saying, put that desire in our heart mm-hmm. to be more like Christ. And God is going to answer that prayer. And as Pastor was saying, it's really our own willingness. You know, how willing are we, you know, to want the char- more of the character of Christ in our life? And that's really what, you know, through the teaching I've been looking at in my life is like, okay, so how much more do I really want? Mm-hmm. You know, and um, because... I was going to say, you know, you know, I learned a long time ago that, you know, you, you pray general, it, you, it's not, it's, there's not a good measure to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you pray for a particular thing in your life, like if you're praying that you say, God, make me more like Christ or, you know, make me more holy, that's hard to measure. But if you're asking God to give you the grace to be kind to your wife or to uh, be more diligent, to show up on time for service or prayer, those are the kind of things that you can really measure. Mm-hmm. And those are the kind of things that, and you, we all know that God has his finger on an area of our lives that he wants to change. Mm-hmm. And it's not like something that's a guesswork. No, there's areas, there's things that God, because we hear it. We've heard it and we hear it. Mm-hmm. And those are the kind of things that we should be praying about. And, and if we're not praying about those things, then we should be praying for God to give us the desire to want to, to do that mm. and to be able to change because God is able to change. Mm. I mean, if God can, you know, if a man can be put to death on a cross and wipe away our sin debt and allow us to be before the presence of God, then he's, he's more than able to part, you know, more than able to um, cause us to change and be into the image of his son, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Amen. And uh, so those are some of the things that I really took from the teaching. Mm-hmm. You know, <clears throat> I always enjoy the teachings because inevitably something from a previous teaching is right there as, as a sort of like a preamble to the teaching we're on. Uh, a couple of weeks before that teaching on, on Ephesians 3.20, <clears throat> Pastor talked about from Matthew 11.28, come unto me all you heavy layers and I will give you rest. What better invitation do we need than that? And then he also taught from <clears throat> Psalm 23 where David is is proclaiming, Lord is his shepherd, he shall not want. Here we have two testimonies of scripture that tell us one thing. Come to the Lord for what you have need of. He's your shepherd, will mm-hmm. take good care of you. And as Jesus reiterated, come unto me and I will give you rest. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then of course we were in the teaching passage, it really stood out to me as he went through slowly, the first Kings, we talked about Solomon's prayer. Mm-hmm. And the first thing that stood out, he didn't say, well, you know, David anointed Solomon to be king and Proclaim that you'll be king. And it's not like Solomon said, I want a new palace. That old ruddy one that God, that dad had needs to be renovated. The first thing he said was that Solomon loved the Lord. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, before he asked anything of the Lord, his heart was towards the Lord his maker. And again, that's, that's so important for us is that do we put the ask before the love of God first? When, of course, the most important part is, Lord, just knowing you 
is the greatest gift of all. Help me to love you first, and then come and ask because of your mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. That is just such a tremendous foundation to start with. Everybody stood out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. One of the questions that we wrote down on the paper that had come from the teaching was, what is the revealed will of God for your life that you're not walking in? And we gave that some discussion at our meeting. Um, and as I was starting to think about the answer, uh, my response was kind of like, well, pretty much everything that I'm doing, I could be doing better, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so mm -hmm. the stuff that I'm doing is the, the will of God for my life. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been born again. I'm serving him. I spend time in his word and in prayer. I, I love my wife and my kids. And by God's grace, I love my friends and lay down my life for people mm -hmm. and do what I think he wants me to do today. Um, but everything that I do, if somebody would ask me, hey, why are you doing that? I would hopefully respond because it's the Lord's will for me to do it. Mm -hmm. But I could be doing it better. I'm immediately aware of a lack of like purity or um, just complete consecration to the Lord in that area in my life. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Like if I asked you, hey, why are you doing what you're doing? And then if I went on and you said, well, because God wants me to do this. And are you doing it you sure. the could best? You do is, it there any, is there any room for improvement? Yeah. Um, and most of us would say, yeah, there's, there's some things that I see that, that could improve. And so that uh, it was a, a big thing that we talked about at our meeting and mm -hmm. something certainly to, to be thinking about all the time. And a lot of good practical things were shared, um, stuff about uh, being, you know, I'm trying to think of that one. I can see the person. I'm not calling their name right now. If I don't think of it in a second, I will. I'm just ask them to say what it was. Uh, yeah, I won't call their name. Um, one was... Uh, not looking at your phone too much. A couple of us talked about compassion for the lost and sharing the gospel uh, with people boldly. Just those kind of practical mm -hmm. things. What is the revealed will of God? And in those areas in your life, the Lord is able to do, again, exceeding abundantly mm -hmm. above all that we ask or think. And those are the things, the needs that we can lift to the Lord and see him change us. Mm -hmm. uh, Hopefully all of us have some things that are working in our lives now to a greater degree than they were some time ago. And it was a thing where you asked the Lord for help and he has helped you. You could look at your life now and you say, man, I'm not who I was. The Lord has conformed me to his image. And uh, that's the process that we're interested in continuing to be involved in. So if I hear what you're saying, uh, uh, in most of our lives, uh, uh, change will not necessarily uh, involve ceasing from doing a lot of what we're doing and starting to do things that we are not presently doing. It will very likely involve us doing better mm -hmm. what we are already doing. Amen. Yep. With a greater purity and greater... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We, we say that so often in the teachings. It's not common for a pastor to get up and say, hey guys, um, yeah. I was reading the Bible and I found a new doctrine. Or I found, you know, yeah, a new piece of scripture and I've got this brand new revelation. We don't hear that too often, do we? Do we? No, we don't. Mm. Yep. If you go back and listen to the teachings from the last month, year, decade, score. It's a lot of the same stuff mm -hmm. over and over again. We were talking about it with basketball camp. If we do basketball camp for the next 60 years, whenever, however long until the Lord comes back, we're going to teach the kids the same message every year. We don't mm -hmm. have anything new and exciting. It's it exciting. do it. It's exciting. It's mm -hmm. just not new. Um, and so, yes, the things that we have heard, we start walking in them. So, we, yeah, we get mm -hmm. saved. We begin to learn to trust the Lord, to honor him in our work, in our giving, in our relationships, in our service, and all these things. And then as we go along, uh, there are uh, impurities that continue 
to be worked out by the Spirit of God in our lives. And so that's what we continue to look to him for. Uh, many of you all know people, maybe, maybe they're family members, they're co-workers, they're, they're neighbors. Um, they claim Christianity. Uh, you talk with them. You're not prepared to say uh, definitely that they're not. You have concerns. You have some questions. Uh, at times when you're talking with them, it seems like hmm, there might be some evidence of life there. Uh, in a charitable way, you look at their lives, however, and you think, hmm, there's definitely need for some, what? Some kind of maturation, some kind of improvement, some kind of growth. And that's sort of what we're talking about right now, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Where the um, same might be said of us or, in, again, in fairness, all Christians. There's room for some growth, isn't there? Yeah. 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 And... Yes, while our God is a God who uh, has and does the spectacular, the very visible uh, spectacular, uh, it's also uh, supernatural to change a life, to change one's character or behavior. Mm -hmm. um, people, people, uh, well, people work real hard. People outside of Christ work real hard to change who they are. I mean, they, you got these self-help seminars and self-help gurus who give the seminars and write books, and, and they're, they're all geared toward people trying to help, help people trying to change, right? Yeah. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above any self-help seminar could ever do. <laughs> He does a deep work from within. He does. He, he purges and purifies. And, and as we look to him, as we ask him, let's, let's talk some about asking. Mm -hmm. I know that in some of the, the meetings there was some discussion of, of asking. So we'll ask along those, or we'll talk along those lines. Jump on in, somebody. I know in our meeting, actually it started during the teaching. I was sitting next to Stephen Hofstadter there in the teaching and Pastor used James reference about asking a miss. So after the service we asked about the word amiss, told him to turn to it in his Bible. He looked at his says wrong motives. He has the NIV and I said, see, you heard the word amiss in the teaching, and just in case you didn't know what that meant, now in your Bible you see the word wrong motives. So we asked with wrong motives. And of course we shared that in our meeting and that really got some people to really respond because some have mentioned I ask really because I want this. Really, is this something that really God wants to give me? Although he know, we know that God will bless us beyond measure. But am I asking with the wrong motive? And I, that got quite a bit of mileage in the meeting. And it went into things like I'm not content with such things as I have because mm -hmm. I have this, I want this now. I have a, a, a bathtub and I want a better bathtub. That, that's not true. But, um, not true that you have a bathtub? Well, not true. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't true for our meeting. But oh, right, nice that's one of the most common things, I'm though. Content. Better bathtubs. That's, that's right. one of the most common requests. It came out in our yes. meeting. Oh, yeah. Mars, yeah. too. Yeah. That's what I wanted. Right it's on there. my list. Well, that's right. So we don't pray for the bathtub because yeah. we're content. But that came up in the meeting, just being content with such things as you have. But then you can pray for other things as you, as you need them. And it was good to hear people talk about that. Um, quite a few mentioned that. You know, just... I just want these things. I want these things. And is it really to honor God with what you have or, or just for your own? Someone said, consuming on my own lust. Mm -hmm. so right, right James, James. James said that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> point, too. So, again, good to hear people see that, that why am I asking? Is it for me or is it because, of, again, my own self? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Another aspect of the asking that we discussed was uh, just doing it. Uh, I said it, and I think there was some agreement. Um, a lot of times I'll be aware of something. Maybe you're convicted. You're sitting here listening to a teaching. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. That needs to improve in my life. And then it just sits there, kind of in the realm of the mind, but not uh, getting into my prayer. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever been guilty of that before? Yep. Where you're like, oh, the, yep. the difference between knowing there's a problem and then actually taking it to the Lord in prayer. And it's not hard. I don't... I don't know why. Uh, it's par in part because of just uh, laziness, negligence, uh, lack of seriousness in dealing with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like I'm 
avoiding asking God. It's just not as important to me as it should be to change in whatever area it is. So yeah, you're sitting in a teaching and a point is made, whatever it is, the, yeah, be more patient with kids. Yeah, I need to be more patient with my kids. And I just keep thinking that, yeah, I need to be more patient with my kids. I need yeah. to be more patient. Yeah, you know, in, uh, maybe I'm just uh, talking out of my own heart here, but um, uh, I think part of the problem with the not asking mm -hmm. is also that I, if I ask, I know that I mm. might actually have to change. Yeah, right. it's going to cost me something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So I can, it's one thing to, to, to feel conviction and to acknowledge that, yeah, that's not right. Yeah. But if I start asking God, right. then I know he's going to start working me and I'm actually going to have to be patient. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And I'm going to have to die to self to do that. And um, yeah, it's, um, it's one thing to feel some compunction. It's another to sorrow to repentance, Amen. to really change. You know, a, a change uh, that requires death to self and allowing Jesus to have his, his way in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the take home point there is. Yeah, ask. no doubt. Yeah. Don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, the take, I don't want to take that point home, yeah, that, yeah. the not asking. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah but yeah. that's, you know, that's sometimes where we live. Yeah, yeah. As I'm not asking because if I do, yeah. then God will probably give it to me. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 And Jesus said, ask. And he does. Be given ask. To you. Yep. Ask. Yep. Yeah. And he usually comes in the form of a trial um, where God brings something upon us. If we're asking for patience, God brings upon a trial in our lives that will create an opportunity for us to be patient. And, um, and we don't necessarily like that. And the time and effort it takes, we're talking about the change. That is something seriously that I guess is, we do consider before we ask. Because we talked a little bit about asking and keep on asking. Because mm -hmm. also I think sometimes out of sight, out of mind, you ask, but then as it sort of drifts away and something else comes up, you're no longer asking um, about it. And it sort of gets pushed to the back until it becomes an issue again. Either someone is driving, getting on your, in, you know, your patience, they're wearing you thin or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden it comes out again and you're just, you're not pleased with your character. So you're praying about it, but then you forget about it again. Yep. Um, but if you're praying, God will bring trials in your life. He will bring situations in your life that be able to get you to make that change. Mm -hmm. I know it's been brought up already, but um, uh, the reason we are aware of that need to change in the first place is because, is because God makes us aware. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he's the one that says, okay, this needs to change. And our response uh, should be an acknowledgement and then uh, going back to him with a request for the help to, to, that the change might be brought about in our life and our character and our conduct. And it's really not that complicated. It doesn't have to involve uh, condemnation. Uh, nope, okay, I, I hear what you're saying, Lord. I, I, I do need to change in this area of my life. And so we ask the Lord for his help, and he's a good God. He's a loving father, and he proceeds with his work. He does. He's working there already. He's just he's, uh, brought it to our attention to a, a greater measure that there is some work that needs to be done here. And so we're, we're in, in asking, we're getting into agreement or cooperation with, we're yielding to, to his, uh, his working in us. You talked also about asking for the eternal things, not asking, like we said already, to consume it on our own lust or just praying for the temporal things. But <clears throat> what can you pray for that uh, make requests for eternal treasures, treasures mm -hmm. in heaven? Mm -hmm. that, should be a, a, that, that should be our prayer, mm -hmm. obviously, all of it. Even if we are praying for a temporal thing, it should be because... We believe it to be God's will for our lives. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but if you, if you could look at just a, a comparison of what you pray for, do you pray for the eternal things? Is that what you're asking for? Lord, please. And then whatever fills in that blank, is it glorify your name, Father, through these eternal treasures? I, personally, the vast majority of praying that I do is for the, whatever, 60 of us here mm -hmm. to make it to heaven. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, the, that's about all I pray for. I should probably pray for some other things a little bit more. But, you know, it's related to that. Lord, please fill this person with the knowledge of your will. Heal them, strengthen them, help them to do the word. And you just pray it. Mm -hmm. And if, if it's true prayer, you just, it's originating in God and his spirit. And you just keep praying. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's what uh, we should be asking for, the eternal mm -hmm. treasures. Mm -hmm. uh, hallelujah. There's there another, asp another aspect that Pastor brought out in uh, Hebrews 11, 6, about praying in faith. Um, you know, God is definitely a reward of those who diligently seek him. But I think I'm guilty sometimes of categorizing my prayers in t based upon my experiences, um, where I've seen God answer in, you know, a prayer request before, and I have more faith or more confidence that he'll do it again. Whereas if I haven't seen it before or I'm expecting for something that is, you know, a new aspect of my life or and then I'm not as convinced or maybe I don't even move as much faith or expectations of God answering that prayer. And that's something that, that I need the Lord to help me with so that I'm not basing my prayer off of experience but solely off the word of God and what God says, mm -hmm. stepping out in faith. Mm -hmm. Going back briefly to some of the things Jim was saying a moment ago, you all know that it's not wrong to pray for things uh, temporal, not, not wrong to do so, whether it be your, you know, your, uh, the healing of your body or a material, natural need of some sort. No, but it's not, it's not wrong or unspiritual to, to pray about those things. Uh, in part, one of the things that we were emphasizing was that... Uh, uh, we can be pretty sure we are on real safe ground uh, asking the Lord for greater Christ-likeness of character. Um, it's, uh, it's probably not going to be, we're probably not going to be asking amiss if we're asking that the Lord would conform us to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. You with me there? I'm, I'm praying about uh, this car versus that car. Well, you know, maybe there's, there, that kind of prayer could be, not necessarily, but could be tainted with some, uh, some selfish uh, interest. But maybe less, considerably less likely when we're praying about uh, things that would pertain to our character and greater Christ-likeness. Amen? But definitely, the Bible says to acknowledge God in all our ways. Amen? And to ask and receive that your joy may be full. And certainly that can include the things that are, are natural. Uh, we have probably all experienced, probably every one of us has experienced God uh, meeting some little natural need. And, uh, and it gave us occasion to be very blessed with a, a greater awareness of his involvement in the, the small and little details of everyday life. And they, those things build faith as well, don't they? Mm -hmm. yeah, we're thankful for the work that he does in our character, making us more like, you know, better husbands and better parents. But it is also very reassuring and encouraging that the Lord, yeah, I think of, you know, Sarah's testimony there of a few weeks ago where the Lord provides a parking spot, you know, and it's an opportunity to encourage the kids that, yep, the Lord is there for things big and small, isn't he? Amen. Yep, he is. Yeah. And those are ways in which the Lord shows himself mighty and very, very involved in every aspect of our lives. So ask freely. Amen. Ask freely. Yeah. What else? What else? I know you mentioned in the teaching that sometimes, to your point, we limit God by not praying for things mm -hmm. because they seem well beyond our ability to do so. Chances are they probably are, but that's why he's God and we're not. But um, it was interesting. We had, doing basketball camp, um, I came up for someone to coach a team at the last minute. And we're standing back there having a meeting, and I'm thinking, I can't do this. Cheryl, get Cheryl to do it. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I don't even know these kids' names. But I really, I mean, all, I really believe the Lord was saying, volunteer to do it. Step out in faith, trust me, and do it. And I just kept going, no, no. But I could not ignore that, the prompting of the Lord to do that. And I felt to not be obedient would be sin. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Stuck my hand up and agreed to do it and uh, trusted the Lord and, and um, great time. 
Amen. Yeah, great testimony. We got back in the locker room station and we had the best time of discussion about things of the Lord. And, mm. and of course, when something like that happens, instead of being so joyful, which I was, I was humbled because for a minute there, mm. I denied him. I said, God can't give me the ability to coach these boys for one day and, and be glorified in it. But um, as Moses said, I got to see his glory mm -hmm. and then was humbled by it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah, the Lord gets himself glory mm -hmm. in answered prayer. Yeah. All kinds of answered prayer. And he does. We, we can and should be a people who, who look to the Lord. Faith is a pleasing thing to God. Because really, he, um, he has he's, he's, uh, got our hearts in a place where he can show himself mighty. And that causes us to know him more. Our eyes are open to his greatness, his goodness, his love, his care, his provision. And we praise him and bless him and, and are more inclined toward trusting him yet again and for all that we have need of. Because the Lord is all that we have need of. Amen? Yes. Amen. Who else? Or what else might we talk of? Sure. Just a little bit more. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> One of the uh, good points was uh, failure to actively believe is, in effect, refusing to believe. And when the Lord teaches us to believe for something, he expects us to, to actively believe him. Um, sometimes I perhaps act like there's a door number three or there's, there's the potential to act like, well, I'm not believing, I'm not disbelieving, I'm somewhere in the middle. And when the Lord says, uh, he reveals his will to us, again, to continue along the lines of just our being conformed to Jesus' image, we should actively believe that that's going to happen. And mm -hmm. we shouldn't give place to that attitude of like, oh, this, this probably won't happen. And we could certainly take it into other areas beyond just your personal character the healing of a body, the salvation of a soul, the provision for a natural need. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that the Lord's not going to do it, but I'm just not really expecting him to do it. Um, There's a good reminder that we should actively believe. We've got to mm -hmm. stand and, yes, fight the good fight of faith. And when the, the doubts come or we are convicted by the Spirit and we recognize, I'm not actively believing here, well start believing. And where does faith come from? It comes from the Word. And just speaking the Word of God, opening it up. If you don't know what to speak, read it, meditate on it. Let it be in your prayer to the Lord. Lord, your Word says that whatever it is, without holiness, no man will see the Lord. This is your will, even my sanctification, that you will conform me to the image of your Son by your Spirit, that you are at work in me to will and to do of your good pleasure, mm -hmm. and that the fruit of the Spirit is kindness. And so, Lord, I'm believing you for this. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the way we see the work of the Lord done in our lives? It's, it's a pure little, there a little. It's not, it's, uh, the, the transformation isn't uh, uh, sudden and dramatic, usually, is it? No, it's, it's rather gradual, the Lord doing his work in us. And yet, that doesn't mean that we don't continue to pray. No, we, there needs to be an active, ongoing exercise of faith. I know Steve was talking to it, and others have... Uh, of just the need to ask and keep on asking. Continue to actively trust God for him to do what he said he would do. And uh, we should not be a people who get discouraged. God has not given us good reason to get discouraged. On the contrary, he has shown us that he is a faithful God. Amen? Amen. Now, often in the salutations of, uh, of, of, of Paul to the various churches as they're uh, as it's recorded in the, uh, the scriptures, you see him uh, in rather glowing terms uh, talking about uh, the, the strength and the progress of these people and his confidence that the Lord will uh, complete the work that he's begun. Amen. And uh, we can have that confidence. We should have that confidence. Amen? Yeah. As it would pertain to ourselves and certainly as it would pertain to those that are around us. Amen. The one who has begun the good work is committed to completing the good work. Amen? Amen. 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 But yes, that's, you know, that's, that's faith. That's, um, that's, uh, we're not moved by 
what we might consider to be lack of progress, whether it be in our uh, uh, in a personal assessment of of spirituality, um, or as we might look at somebody else and think that hmm, you know, they're not where they should be. Well, that may be true. Maybe they're not where they should be, but um, uh, you know, the Lord's not done. Amen. And so we move in faith toward the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess that'll be enough now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks and praise for your goodness that you are committed to perfecting the work you've begun in the hearts and lives of your people. We want to be a people who pray and ask according to your will and move in the confidence that you hear us and will grant the petitions we've asked. We want to ask and keep on asking. We don't want to ask amiss. Teach us to ask in keeping with what you're placing upon our hearts. You desire to do exceeding abundantly above all that we would ask or think. Not only are you able, but you desire to do. And it is according to the power which works in us, the power of your Holy Spirit. Moving to purge and purify and conform us to the image of Jesus and, and to use us as vessels that are anointed meet for your use, prepared unto every good work. Help us to pray and to keep on praying and to trust you and to keep on trusting you. We give you thanks, O oh Lord God. Now bless these, your people, I ask, Father God. Strengthen them with might by your spirit in the inner man, fill them with the knowledge of your will. With all wisdom and spiritual understanding, O oh Father God. Make them better husbands and better wives, better dads and better moms. Make them better Christians. Bro better brothers and sisters to the souls that you have placed in their lives, make them better witnesses. Brighter lights in the midst of a wicked, perverse generation. Thank you for that, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll greet one another in the love of the Lord Jesus. God's grace and peace go with you all.